Hey everyone, big political moves in both Westminster and Alabama this week. Two places that don't often have much in common, although if you're a politician from the West Midlands and fancy a holiday to America, why not spend a week at the Hilton in Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama, that is, then try submitting the first class airline ticket as a quote, honest mistake. Others have done worse. But first, let's discuss that Brexit vote in Westminster. Essentially, the Parliament will now get to vote on whether they like Theresa May's deal or not. It'll be like the end of a dinner party when the host asks the guests what they thought of it all, but it still refuses to disclose what type of meat the main course actually contained. But the Paris in Brussels are certainly happy enough to move on to the next stage of the talks. Of course, at their dinner parties, they eat frog's legs and put mayonnaise on their chips, so who knows how the second stage will go. That vote, though, according to the press, it was a result of a betrayal by capricious Tory rebels akin to something out of a John le Carre novel. And now the Labour Party will get the chance to race in on horseback as saviours at the last minute to vote down the process, to prevent the deal and prevent Brexit. Or at least they would be, had the date not already been placed in law and were the EU not already moving on to planning a more federal post-UK Europe. In around 18 months, it's a fact that the UK will either drop out with Theresa May's deal or the Lib Dems in the more metropolitan wing of the Labour Party will win their vote and thus deliver a WTO rules hard Brexit. And of course, a few days later, even at that stage, the Labour Party will no doubt put a series of contradictory statements about the future of the customs union with about as much coherence as Diane Abbott attempting to read the football scores. So now to the US. Um, this week saw Roy Moore lose his run for the US Senate seat in Alabama, and the deeply conservative state chose their choice of spokesman from the same party as Hillary and Nancy Pelosi. That's the kind of end of days black swan event you might imagine featuring in a montage in a disaster movie, but we live in odd times. Scotland has several conservative MPs after all these days, but this was more condemnation of the system. Moore shouldn't have been the candidate in the first place, but not enough people cared during the primaries to kick him off the ballot, and once his name was actually there, they were stuck with it, like a badly installed ballot bathroom you wish you'd paid more money for. In all honesty, I think the longer term it'll probably be a good result for the Republican Party. If he'd actually won, the Democrats would have used him as a mascot for their campaigning next year to destroy what was left of Trump's power base. It's a bit like how in 92 the Conservatives won a narrow victory, but the resulting five years ultimately destroyed what was left of the party's soul and public credibility. They ultimately paid the price for that win. Perhaps if the likes of Jonathan Aitken had lost their seat in 92, then things would have been very different. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.